Hey guys, Levi here with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a bend back. This is a streamer that was, uh, it's been around for quite some time. I think since the 1890s, it was originally developed as a, uh, a pattern for catching largemouth bass in really weedy ponds and lake situations, but it's a pattern that catches pretty much anything that eats other fish. Saltwater striped bass, bluefish, snook, tarpon, freshwater smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, tie it big enough and you probably catch a pike on it. So we're starting off with an A-Rex NS110 streamer in a size four. And the first step to this fly is to actually put a bend right behind the hook eye. So go ahead and get yourself a pair of pliers and it's a minimal bend. You're not putting a huge bend in this. If you, you know, if it looks like you bent it, you probably bent it too much. It's really, you don't want it to be too stark. And see how I'm bending it and then checking I'm not just going in there and messing it up right off the bat. So take your time with that. And it's only, you know, about an eye's width right behind it is where you want that bend. And a little more. All right, that's actually good enough. See how it's, it's not a huge bend in there. So now we're gonna move into some thread and we're using Unimono in size 4 thousandths in diameter. And we're gonna just go ahead and run a thread base all the way to the bend of the hook here. We're gonna move into some body material next, but I wanna get a, a good base of thread here. So there's some purchase whenever we wrap this uh, flat braid. And we're using flat diamond braid for the body in the color of pearl. This is a fly that you can tie in pretty much any color combination that you like. The one we're tying today, since we're in the Northeast, is going to be the color of a small sand eel, but it'll also match silver sides. And this is a really a good pattern for any common bait fish appearance, whether freshwater dace, things like that, saltwater species like silver sides and sand eels. It does a really good job at imitating. So, You'll see, I ran my thread back and forth a few times just to lay a clean underbody here. And again, if you put a clean underbody in, then the exterior tends to follow suit. You get a nicer looking fly. So go ahead and wrap this, palmer it forward, right to where the bend that you put in that hook starts. And this stuff gives a nice bit of flash. It's a durable material too, so it can stand up to the uh, sand or rocks or wherever you might be fishing. So once you're right where you put that bend in, you can tie this off. Just a couple of securing wraps and snip it. And now we're gonna move into a wing. All right, so grab yourself a a bit of bucktail here and you'll want it to extend beyond your hook shank this is a fly for tying to uh, can imitate a variety of bait fish but this specific one is going to be used to target striped bass eating sand eels but it's a good pattern for anything from sand eels silver sides to a lot of freshwater minnows as well this is a good smallmouth bass fly too and you can really tie it in any color combination that you like this is just happens to be one that uh, works good up here in the Northeast and we are in Maine. So go ahead and <clears throat> measure out a clump of bucktail. It's probably, oh, half a pencil's width maybe. Size that up, you know, it can extend beyond the hook, even a whole shank's length, even more, um, depending on the size of the fly. This is, this wing acts as a parachute and it kills the fly and this rides inverted in the water which makes it nearly weedless and that's why it was created to uh fish those lakey or those lakes filled with weeds and structure and it's good for salt water if you're in the mangroves florida other areas or even just in the northeast there's 
any assortment of things in the sand that might hang you up. This does a good job of preventing that. So whenever you tie this wing in, you want to make sure that your fibers are right on top of the hook shank. You don't want them to creep down and go anywhere else because then that'll mess with the, uh, the keeling of the wing and your fly might not ride upside down in the water. So once we get that bucktail tied in, we're going to move into some flash. This is a uh, green flash boot. And we're also going to accent with uh, some crystal flash to give a little effect of scales. So grab yourself a couple strands of each. It doesn't have to be exact, but um, I'm going to use three of each. So for a total of six on each side. So go ahead and tie that in on the side nearest you. First, just one pin trap. And then tie it in in reverse too. Gets a little more durability in there. You tie it in one way, turn it onto the other side of the fly, and tie it in the opposite direction. You can see that flash looks nice, gives a sort of lateral line appearance. So now we're gonna move into the upper part of the swing. So grab yourself a piece of olive or some a clump of olive bucktail, about the same thickness as the white bunch you used. And clip that off right at the hide. And if your tips are uneven, you know, just even them up a little bit. They don't have to be perfect. This isn't a fly that you want stacked tips in. You want some variance. So just lay that right on top. So go ahead and hit that with a pin trap or two and get it secured and we will trim that out of the way. So now that we have most materials tied in, we're gonna create a head on this. And speaking of materials, all, everything that we're using to tie this fly can be found at tridentflyfishing.com. And all orders over 49 bucks do ship free. So if you're looking to get some flies tied for some schooly action, some striped bass headed your way, it's a great pattern to do it with. And again, we got everything you need there. All right, so now that we have a, a head built up, we're gonna get some eyes. And we're just using flat stick on eyes. Actually, no, I'm sorry, these are 3D eyes. But flat ones work just the same. So we're gonna just tie those in with that mono thread. And once we get the UV resin in there, that thread just disappears and it makes it easier because then they're secured. So get one on each side there. All right. So now that your eyes are tied on, go ahead and get a half hitch, a whip finish, and snip your thread although the fly's not done yet. Now we're gonna move into some UV resin. And we're using Loon UV clear fly finish. And uh, viscosity is thick. It's a little easier to manipulate. You could use thin, but I tend to prefer the thick for this pattern and just for building these small heads. So go ahead and get your UV in there and you know, try to distribute it evenly, but we're gonna get in there with our bodkin and really smooth things out. So we get a nice clean head on this fly. So we're gonna just get in there and distribute this, make sure it's even. It's one of the nice things about that UV resin is the curing time is when you want it to cure. And it's nice durable stuff too. All right, so now that we're happy with that, let's hit it with our light. And you'll notice I've been using the rotating function on this vise the entire time that I've been working with this resin. And if you have a rotary vise, it really pays for itself at this step. It just makes it really easy to get everything evenly cured and evenly distributed to create those nice bait fish profiles and heads. All right. And that is a bend back. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.